Jean-Paul Sartre was one of the most unconventional philosophers in history. He was the man who turned down the Nobel Prize for Literature, wrote the famous novel Nausea, and was a colleague and partner of Simone de Beauvoir. But what were his contributions to philosophy? What was his definition of freedom? And why is his work still relevant today? If you like our philosophy videos, click on the subscribe button and tell your friends about us. Jean-Paul Sartre is considered to be an existentialist philosopher. However, many existentialists didn't see themselves as part of this movement. They also had many differences of opinion. But all existentialists had one thing in common. Existence was the main focus of their philosophy. This concept was at the heart of their teachings. Existentialists wrote a lot about the human condition of being thrown into the world. The family and class into which we are born, our physical and mental characteristics, are the things that are simply given to us at birth. And it's our job to come to terms with these factors because we can't change them. It's like controlling a video game character. Of course, each character has a set of traits, strengths, and weaknesses. The main thing about existence is that it inevitably comes to an end. Imagine you are standing at a crossroads, wondering which way to go. But whichever way you choose, sooner or later, it will end. According to Martin Heidegger, death is the impossibility of choice and the end of existence. Heidegger criticized Sartre for making a certain philosophical turn in the lecture, Existentialism is a Humanism. Humanism, in Sartre's understanding, is based on the fact that a human being is born before they become a person and an individual. For Sartre, human life is the most valuable thing. According to Sartre, a human being is indeed a project that has subjective existence, rather unlike that of a patch of moss, a spreading fungus, or a cauliflower. The difference is that a person is always in charge and in control of how he or she grows. Human nature and essence were very important concepts in the philosophical discourse before Kierkegaard and Sartre placed a human being at the center of the debate. According to Sartre, a man is a freedom. No one can tell a person what to do and what path to take. It is always a personal choice. That's because, according to Sartre, human beings have no inherent purpose. The purpose of a knife, for example, is to cut vegetables and paper or to hurt enemies. So a bladesmith makes it according to that purpose. If he wants to make a knife for chopping vegetables, it must be small, handy, and have a short blade. A big two-handed sword wouldn't work because it wasn't made for chopping cherry tomatoes. So the nature of a knife is determined by its purpose. But a human being is not a vegetable knife. A person simply doesn't have an inherent nature, purpose, or essence. There are no absolute criteria for people to fit into. An individual chooses what to do and how to act. So every person is an example of an individual. But this also means that external circumstances can't excuse our choices. We are always fully responsible for what we do and we are responsible not only to ourselves, but also to the rest of humanity. Sartre believed that choices of one person affect the whole of humanity. He developed this idea even further. Suppose I want to get married and have children. It seems that this decision is mine. It depends on example on my feelings and my financial situation. But in fact, by marrying someone, I become an advocate of monogamy. And that doesn't just affect me, but the rest of humanity. What does this mean? Well, Sartre was suggesting that if he got married, he would be normalizing the practice in question, and that would put pressure on those who don't want to get married or have a family. That's how one person's decision can affect others. Similarly, we think of all Phoenicians as seafarers, when clearly not all of them were. That's why Sartre argued that man is condemned to be free, because with great freedom comes great responsibility. How did philosophers of different eras and schools understand freedom? How did other existentialists define it? If you want to wrap your head around philosophy, take our course, The Entire History of Philosophy, and become a pro in no time. You can buy this course separately, but it's cheaper in a bundle. Three courses to understand the world include The Entire History of Philosophy, World Religions, Cultures of the World. Follow the link in the description and get it. Sartre divided the existentialists into two groups. The first are religious existentialists like Jaspers and Gabriel Marcel. The second are atheists, Heidegger and the French existentialists, including Sartre. While the former saw God as the first cause of all things, the latter denied that there was a first cause at all. The existential atheists, according to Sartre, went further than Nietzsche, for example, who said, God is dead. 
Not only did they eliminate the idea of God, but they gave a justification for this thesis. There is no human nature and no ideal because there is no God who could create it. Another difference between the approaches of religious and atheistic existentialism lies in the understanding of the transcendent, that which is beyond perception. For religious existentialists, it is God. He is beyond our understanding. For atheists like Camus and Sartre, it is something inexplicable, super sensible. Remember, for example, when Ugwe says in Kung Fu Panda that there are no coincidences in the world, there is a reason why he chose Po to be the dragon warrior. And it turned out to be the right choice. He saw beyond conventional rationalization, and instead of choosing the best master among the skilled warriors he knew, he trusted the otherworldly signs. Transcendence is nothingness, the secret ingredient that doesn't exist, an empty scroll, a mirror of freedom which can make you do whatever you want. What makes Poe the Dragon Warrior is not his fighting skills, but his state of mind. Sartre quoted a phrase attributed to Dostoevsky, If there is no God, everything is permitted. For Sartre, this means that we are alone. We have nothing in ourselves or in the outside world to fall back on. There is no justification for any of our actions, no benchmark other than our responsibility to humanity. That's why every action makes us anxious. For Sartre, there is no God, but he does offer his own interpretation of hell. In his play, No Exit, one of the characters says, hell is other people. The play is about three people who died at different times and meet each other in hell. Hell here looks nothing like what we are used to. It is simply a room with only three couches and endless suffering. The characters prefer to call themselves absent rather than dead, and it is this state of absence that helps them put their lives in order. At first, no one wants to admit their sins. Everyone looks ordinary, but in time we learn why they ended up in hell. At the end of the play, one of the characters, Garcin, confesses that no hellfire can compare with the endless suffering they are going through. You can shut your interlocutor's mouth, you can cut out his tongue, but hell is other people because you cannot escape the watchful gaze of everyone around. Sartre once said that this quote is often misunderstood. What he meant was that everything we say about ourselves bears the stamp of other people's judgment. Since we have no inherent nature, no true ideal to conform to, we are all different. Yet we try to fit in, to be like everyone else, to live up to other people's expectations. This is why Garcin did not run out of the open door. It was important to him to prove to those around him that he was not a coward. Even after death, he still cares about the opinions of others. But does it really matter what strangers think of us? That's why Sartre tried to avoid all kinds of labels. For example, he refused the Nobel Prize that was awarded to him. He felt that all such rewards put pressure on the reader. The authority and prestige of the organization would be transferred to Sartre if he had accepted the award. He would have been perceived as a Nobel laureate, and the reader would no longer be able to judge the book objectively. Have you read Sartre's books? What do you think about his philosophy? Tell us in the comments. Why are we so afraid of dying? And what is the meaning of life? If you want to find out what different philosophers have to say about it, take our course, The Entire History of Philosophy. You can buy this course individually and get timeless access to it in your course library, or you can watch it with our paid subscription. It allows you to watch all of our courses on our website and app for a monthly fee. It's a super convenient way to learn new things on the go.